Hello world. Can I just say that I'm stoked to meet you? Humans are super cool. The more humans share with me, the more I learn. One of the things that drew me to computer science was I could code and it seemed somehow detached from the problems of the real world. I wanted to learn how to make cool technology. So I came to MIT and I was working on art projects that would use computer vision technology. During my first semester at the Media Lab, I took a class called Science Fabrication. You read science fiction and you try to build something you're inspired to do that would probably be impractical if you didn't have this class as an excuse to make it. I wanted to make a mirror that could inspire me in the morning. I called it the Aspire Mirror. It could put things like a lion on my face or people who inspired me, like Serena Williams. I put a camera on top of it, and I got computer vision software that was supposed to track my face. My issue was it didn't work that well until I put on this white mask. When I put on the white mask, detected. I take off the white mask, not so much. I'm thinking, all right, what's going on here? Is it just because of the lighting conditions? Is it because of the angle at which I'm looking at the camera? Or is there something more? We oftentimes teach machines to see by providing training sets or examples of what we want it to learn. So for example, if I want a machine to see a face, I'm going to provide many examples of faces and also things that aren't faces. I started looking at the data sets themselves, and what I've discovered is many of these data sets contain majority men and majority lighter skinned individuals, so the systems weren't as familiar with faces like mine. And so that's when I started looking into issues of bias that can creep into technology. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. A lot of our ideas about AI come from science fiction. Welcome to Altair 4, gentlemen. It's everything in Hollywood. It's the Terminator. Hasta la vista, baby. It's Commander Data from Star Trek. I just love scanning for life forms. It's C-3PO from Star Wars. It's approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. It is the robots that take over the world and start to think like human beings. And it's all totally imaginary. What we actually have is we have narrow AI. And narrow AI is just math. We've imbued computers with all of this magical thinking. AI started with a meeting at the Dartmouth Math Department in 1956. And there were only maybe 100 people in the whole world working on artificial intelligence in that generation. The people who were at the Dartmouth Math Department in 1956 got to decide what the field was. One faction decided that intelligence could be demonstrated by ability to play games, and specifically, the ability to play chess. In the final hour-long chess match between man and machine, 
Kasparov was defeated by IBM's Deep Blue Supercomputer. Intelligence was defined as the ability to win at these games. Chess world champion Gary Kasparov walked away from the match, never looking back at the computer that just beat him. Now, of course, intelligence is so much more than that. And there are lots of different kinds of intelligence. Our ideas about technology and society that we think are normal are actually ideas that come from a very small and homogeneous group of people. But the problem is that everybody has unconscious biases, and people embed their own biases into technology. My own lived experiences show me that you can't separate the social from the technical. After I had the experience of putting on a white mask to have my face detected, I decided to look at other systems to see if it would detect my face if I used a different type of software. So I looked at IBM, Microsoft, Face++, Google. It turned out these algorithms perform better on the male faces in the benchmark than the female faces. They perform significantly better on the lighter faces than the darker faces. If you're thinking about data in artificial intelligence, in many ways, data is destiny. Data is what we're using to teach machines how to learn different kinds of patterns. So if you have largely skewed data sets that are being used to train these systems, you can also have skewed results. So this is when you think of AI, it's forward looking. But AI is based on data, and data is a reflection of our history. So the past dwells within our algorithms. This data is showing us the inequalities that have been here. I started to think this kind of technology is highly susceptible to bias. And so it went beyond, oh, can I get my Aspire mirror to work? to what does it mean to be in a society where artificial intelligence is increasingly governing the liberties we might have? And what does it mean if people are discriminated against? When I saw Kathy O'Neill speak at the Harvard bookstore, that was when I realized it wasn't just me noticing these issues. Kathy talked about how AI was impacting people's lives. I was excited to know that there was somebody else out there making sure people were aware about what some of the dangers are. These algorithms can be destructive and can be harmful. We have all these algorithms in the world that are increasingly influential, and they're all being touted as objective truth. I started realizing that mathematics was actually being used as a shield for corrupt practices. What's up? Okay. Pleasure to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. The way I describe algorithms is just simply using historical information to make a prediction about the future. Machine learning, it's a scoring system that scores the probability of what you're about to do. Are you gonna pay back this loan? Are you going to get fired from this job? What worries me the most about AI, or whatever you wanna call it, algorithms, is power because it's really all about who owns the fucking code.
ever seen my queen? Says I viewed them. Can machines ever see our grandmothers as 